When we first introduced the circular flow diagram, we talked about what we mean by an economy. And now I want to zero in on one aspect of an economy, which I'll call the productive capacity of that economy. And I'll do that by building a simple economy. In this economy, there are 10 workers. And this is an agrarian economy in which there are only two sectors. There's the sector that grows apples, which we'll call the A sector, and there's a sector that grows bananas, which, call the, which we'll call the B sector. And we'll assume that each worker, if they worked at full capacity, would be able to produce up to 12 tons of apples per year if all they did was produce apples. And each worker, if they worked at full capacity, would be able to produce up to six tons of bananas per year if all they did was produce bananas. We can now illustrate the various production possibilities in this economy by creating a simple table. In that table, we'll have a column that will represent the number of workers that are allocated to the apple sector and another column that illustrates the number of workers allocated to the banana sector. So if we allocate no workers to the apple sector, we'd be allocating all 10 workers to the banana sector. If we allocated two workers to the apple sector, we'd have eight left for the banana sector. If we have four in apples, we'll have six in bananas. Six in apples will mean four in bananas. Eight in apples will mean two in bananas and 10 in apples will mean that we have no workers left to produce bananas. We can then create a third column where we show how many apples would be produced in this economy if we allocated the workers in these ways. If we allocate no workers in the apple sector, we'd be producing no bananas. If we allocated two workers to the apple sector, since they each produce 12 tons of apples, we'd be producing 24 tons of apples. With four workers, we'd produce 48 tons of apples. With six workers, we'd be producing 72, with eight, 96, and with 10, 120. We can do something similar for bananas. For each allocation of workers across the two sectors, how many bananas are we gonna produce? If all 10 are allocated to the banana sector, and each worker produces six tons of bananas per year, we'd be producing 60 tons. If we only allocated eight workers to the banana sector and each produced six tons, we'd be producing 48 tons. With six workers, we'd produce 36. With four, we'd produce 24. With two, we'd produce 12. And with no workers in the banana sector, we wouldn't produce any bananas. So we now have a simple table that illustrates some of the production possibilities in this simple economy. We can then take the numbers in that table and we can transfer them to a graph. In this graph, we're gonna put apples on the vertical axis and bananas on the horizontal axis. And we can simply look at each row and plot each row as a point on this graph. So if we look at the first row, we, we would be producing zero apples and 60 bananas. So where would that point be in this graph? Well, we produce zero apples and 60 tons of bananas. So that first row would be a point on the horizontal axis, 60 bananas and no apples. The last row in the table would have 120 apples but zero bananas. So it would be this point here, 120 apples, but zero bananas. If we looked at the second row, we'd be producing 24 apples and 48 bananas. So 48 bananas and 24 apples. To a point like this. Or the second to last row, we'd be producing 96 apples and 12 bananas. 
which would be a point like this. And we could plot the other points, but all of those points would lie on the same line, a line connecting the endpoints that we started with. And that line is what we call the production possibilities curve, or the PPC. It illustrates all the possible production levels that this economy could reach as we allocate workers across the apple and the banana sectors in different ways. It illustrates the ones in the table and lots of others as well. Now, there are other possible production possibilities in this economy. We could, for example, produce this point where we produce 24 apples and maybe uh, 30 bananas. But if we produced at that point, we're not fully utilizing all the resources in the economy. We could produce more of everything. So the production possibility curve tells us all the production possibilities if all resources are fully employed in the economy. Now what we couldn't do is produce points outside of this production possibilities curve. If we tried to produce a point like that, we would attempt to do something that is literally not possible for this economy to do. The economy simply doesn't have enough resources to produce that point out here. It can only go up to the production possibility curve. So we have a curve that illustrates at any given time the production possibilities of an economy, the productive capacity of an economy. We could then ask, how does that change if something in the economy changes? So suppose we start again with the same production possibility curve. We had 60 here and 120 here. And this was our initial production possibility curve for this economy. But then something happens. There's a technological change that makes workers in the banana sector more productive. Suppose, for example, we invented a machine that allowed workers in the banana sector to harvest twice as many bananas per hour as they were able to before. So then they'd be able to harvest 12 tons of bananas per year instead of six. So what would change in the table? Well, the different possibilities for allocating workers across the two sectors wouldn't change. The number of apples we'd produce with a given number of workers also wouldn't change because we've had no technological change in the apple sector. So all of these numbers would remain the same. The only numbers that would change are the numbers in the banana sector because that's where the technological change has happened. Instead of being able to produce 60 tons of bananas if we allocated all the workers to the banana sector, we'd now be able to produce 120. Instead of be able, being able to produce 48 tons with 8 workers, we'd be able to produce twice as many, or 96. And similarly, each of these numbers would, would double. So we can then say, well, how would that change this production possibilities curve? If we allocated no workers to the banana sector and every worker to the apple sector, we'd have exactly the same production possibility as we did before. We'd be in that last row, we'd be able to produce 120 apples, but no bananas. Zero times two is still zero. So this point wouldn't change. But if we allocated all the workers to the banana sector, we can now produce 120 instead of 60. 120 instead of 60. So the new production possibility curve would rotate outward. This would represent an increase in technology for harvesting bananas. We could similarly ask, what if instead there was an increase in technology for harvesting apples? We could again start with our initial production possibility curve. So we have bananas on this axis, apples on this axis. We had our initial curve with 60 and 120. But now we see a technological change in the apple production sector. 
So if we allocated all our workers to the banana sector, we'd still only be able to produce 60 apples. But if we allocated all of our workers to the apple sector, we'd able, be able to produce a lot more apples. So now we would get a rotation of the production possibility curve that looks like this. So this would be an increase in the technology for harvesting apples. Finally, we could ask, what if there's a general change in, the, in technology? What if we invent a machine that makes us more productive at harvesting both apples and bananas in exactly the same way? Well, again, we could start with our initial production possibility curve, where we had 120 and 60 on the axes. But now if we allocate all of our workers to the banana sector, we'd be able to produce more bananas. If we allocate all our workers to the apple sector, we'd be able to produce more apples. So we'd get a new production possibility curve that is shifted from the original one. We can be more productive in both sectors. So the production possibility curve allows us to illustrate the productive capacity of an economy at any given time and how that productive capacity changes as the economy experiences changes in technology.